All right, so now that we have this kind of breakdown, we can uh, maybe duplicate these base parts right here. So then we can set it up for a bit of a breakdown right here. And wondering why we were slept on, but we never belonged. So we'll just take out the, the ending, ending part of that bass line. We'll just pull those back so that way we don't hear those last notes in the bass line. And maybe drag these drums out a little bit farther. All right, so now it should get up to where it ends. Okay, and this is where we can add in a little bit of automation. So we can go back to and maybe turn off this EQ here. So we can press this on off button and then we can automate this so that it turns off whenever this part comes in here. But we never belonged here. No, we never belonged. And the, the whole time it'll start building through here. I'm here. No, we never belong. And right here where it jumps back in, this is where we could maybe turn it back on again. So this is the downbeat and I'm just adding in, clicking, drawing a dot, and I'm turning this on. So when the, when it's playing before this, you'll see that the EQ is off. And then once, once it gets to a point after that, you see that the EQ turns back on. So that's all we're doing is just turning it off for this kind of breakdown section. And then we can bring back in all of the drums that we did over here. In fact, what we could do is just even copy and paste a lot of what we had before, all of that. So we take all of this, Command C, put our playhead over here, right where that where that beat kind of kicks in, where we where we put the um, EQ at. So now that we hit Command V, it pastes all the drums there. And then we've got our beat kind of going out towards the end of the track. Now, if you don't copy and paste enough, then you could always just highlight some of these and just hit Command D to duplicate again. And we can have that going through the end of the track. So now we've got this kind of breakdown section where there's not much going on. And what we can do is we can add in some drums here about halfway through to start building it back up and getting into back into the drum beat again. So something we might need is a snare hit and we're gonna need this kick sound that we had too. So we'll copy and paste Command C and we'll paste the kick sound over here and we'll look for where this track kind of the middle point where it starts again and right here I think is where it's going to be at so then we can paste a kick drum there and we can just uh, take this and command D duplicate it and just put this maybe on every note there and so that way we can just have that kind of as an extra added little oomph for that part and so I can take those and duplicate that that's off. So now we might need to check the warping on this because it sounds like it's getting a little bit off there in the instrumental. So what we want to do is find that start point. So where this flag is at, that's kind of where this section starts. So let's make sure that it's on track or on beat. So I know that all of these are going to be need to be right on that on that grid line. So then I can go through here and just make sure that each one of these hits are right on the grid line. And so what that does now is it's going to make sure that all those kick drums that I placed down there are going to line up with the beat as well. So now all of that is on beat. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go look for a snare sound. So we can go into our samples and look for a snare. All right, so now I'll create a new audio track. Hit Command T. And we're going to rename this snare. And I'm just going to grab this snare hit that we've got here. I'll make this a little bit shorter. I'm going to add a fade in there. Just because I don't need that hiss at the end of it. And I could also transpose this a little bit. So there we go. Now we've got a snare hit. And then I could work on placing this snare in here so that it kind of helps to build up 
the this whole section, right? So I might just have the kicks at first, so then I'll hit duplicate, and we'll just make a bit of a pattern out of that. All right, then we can just duplicate that. So we get a little bit of a snare pattern there. There we go. And then we could just take this and duplicate control or option drag this. So we can change this grid to quarter notes again, and then just duplicate that out and place it on the quarter note. Actually, no, we want eighth notes. So we want this a little bit faster. So we want eighth notes. So I'll option drag this to each one of those grid lines. And then just double check to make sure that they're on the grid line. I'm gonna go back to the narrow grid and because I wanna create a bit of a stutter effect. All right, I'm gonna command E and split that and then I'm gonna take this and copy it over so I can try and make a bit of a stutter effect. And I'm gonna go on some off notes and make a bit of a syncopated pattern. And I'll option drag this over. There we go. And then I'll duplicate that and put that one on the four. So timing wise, it's just this last bar is eighth notes. And this one needs to go a little bit further over. All right, so we want to build this up and get it from this breakdown back into the dancier kind of section. So we're, we're starting to build it up here. This part is going to have kind of nothing going on. It just has the original kind of bass part. And then what we've got is that we've got the drums, kind of the kick drum coming in. And so what I can do too is I can start to double up on the kick sound too. All right, so I can do this every other kick sound so it comes in more frequently. And then I can do the kicks on every quarter note for this last bar. See how that sounds. Oh, I think it sounds better without those in there. All right, so what we have is snare on the quarter note. On uh, So if we switch this to a 16th note pattern, we have the quarter note here, and then we have this fourth note right before this next downbeat. All right, so then I'm just making this snare pattern so it creates a buildup, all right? And you can do this. You can just make it straight eighth notes. You can make whatever. I like to make it a little bit more interesting. So by having it a little bit syncopated and offbeat like this, it makes it feel... Um, a little more rhythmic and changes up the dynamic of of this kind of build up. So it's not just a straight um, build up for, of, of eighth notes into sixteenth notes or something or quarter notes and all that. So now what we've got is we've got a breakdown and a build up that kind of leads back into the drum section again, right as he starts doing his thing again. And then again we can grab these bass notes here, right? So we can grab this bass section and we can take both of these and option drag that and then line that up with when all the, the beat drops in again. So we want the bass to start in right when all the, the drums start up again too. And then I can just duplicate those over so that they end, up, end out with the song as well. So then I can take these drums and I can duplicate those out a bit and just have all this stuff ending at about the same time. All right, and maybe a little extra drum outro for the DJs if the, if the DJs want to spin this. Maybe take off that little couple notes at the end of it. All right, so what we've got now is we've got an intro. We've got the main section of the song. We did a little bit of edits on it here. So we chopped up the, 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 the song a bit, and we've, we added some bass notes to it here. And then we had a, a bit of a breakdown section right here where we go back to the kind of the original song and you can see that what we did was we just turned off the EQ, allowed the main, uh, allowed all of the frequencies to come through for this particular part of the song. And then um, we added in a little bit of a buildup here to bring us back into kind of the main section again where the drums all kick in, the bass kicks in. And so now we've, we've got a bit of a bootleg remix and we can start to add in some extra things to make it more interesting, like little risers and shifter sounds and maybe little extra drum breaks and things like that uh, throughout the song to kind of make it more interesting. So what we can do is go in here and find like 
sometimes reverse symbols work really well. So if you don't have like white noise shifters and stuff like that, or any, any cool like sounding kind of risers, what you can do is grab, uh, look for symbols. And what I'll do is I'll add in another audio track, right? So I'm gonna rename this one closed hat so I know that what that is. And I'll hit Command T, and I'm gonna call this one symbol CYMB reverse. And I'll put this guy in there. So now we've got the audio version of the symbol, and it's the forward version. So I wanna double click that and go into the sample and hit this little rev button. All right, so we wanna reverse it. So when I hit that, it reverses the symbol, and now it'll be kind of a lead in to this, um, this part where the, the buildup gets all the way back to the main beat that we had going on. All right, and because we have that going out, or we have that leading into the next section, we, also, we could also have a bit of a splash symbol or something in here where it kind of leads us out of this section. And it sounds like it's getting a little bit off beat there. So what I wanna do is go in here and double check the warping of these notes. So yeah, see here where that, that kick should be at, right here, this transient, that kick should be right on that 54. So that's throwing off the timing a little bit. And so it's gonna start to make it sound a little bit muddy. So by fixing that, it's gonna put it more on time with these drums. All right, so again, what we can do is we can just grab a cymbal sound or something that would kind of fit for that. Oh, so here's a breath sound. So we can grab this and maybe put that in there as well. And now that's really loud. So what we can do is go into this clip and turn this one down right here. There's a volume inside of this clip and we can actually turn the volume down within the clip itself. All right, and now uh, if we wanted to make this more interesting, instead of putting this on the same track as a symbol reversed, we can add a new audio track, put this symbol gasp in here. And this is where we can start to add in cool like effects, sounds and stuff to make it more interesting than this, this, this breath sound. So we can go into Ableton effects. We can find our EQ, or sorry, we can find our uh, reverb and put the reverb. This is not something I recommend doing unless you're uh, doing extra effect sounds like this. Um, but I don't recommend making this a regular practice. I'm just using this for this particular sound here. Usually what I'll do is I'll put the reverb on a send like this one over here and use a, a separate send to, to do that because it keeps uh, things sounding clean. But now if we put this in here, let's take this decay time up more. But we never belonged here. There you go. But we never belonged here. Maybe try more wet. But we never belonged here. But we never belonged here. So now what we can do is take an EQ and put that on there and just clean this up a little bit. Put a, it's called a high pass filter on it. So it's just cutting out a lot of those low frequencies here. But we never belonged here. And I'll rename this breath. So we just know what that is. All right, we can just adjust the volume a little bit so it fits a little bit better. All right, so then we have that breakdown, then we have the buildup, and we have this symbol kind of leading us back into the, the uh, main section again. All right, so I, I'm, uh, I adjusted the volume on this snare so, it sits, so it's not so loud. Uh, but one thing is it kind of gets lost now. So what we need to do is uh, make it sound a little bit fatter and fuller and so a really easy way to do this would be to just uh, the simple chain that I like to use and it's called a plug-in chain and you just take you use EQ you we can use saturation and we can use compression so with those three plugins we can make this kind of stand out and sit better and, and sound louder without um, having to turn up this volume so much so I'll solo this out so that way uh, we can listen to just the snare And then we can use a saturator to kind of make it fatter. And then we can use the compressor to uh, compress it more. So my suggestion is usually a four to one ratio is pretty good, uh, kind of a fast attack and um, a little bit slower of a release. And then uh, turning down the threshold is what's gonna actually make it start to compress this snare and make, and uh, it's gonna turn down the loudest part of the sound 
right? So if we go in here and take a look at the snare, it's going to start to turn down the loudest part of this sound, so this part right here, but it's also going to start to raise this quieter part after it. So overall, you're going to perceive it to be louder. So that's what we're doing is we're trying to make this sound louder without just turning up the, vol the volume. All right, so now if we put that in with everything else. All right, so I'll select these plugins. I'll hit Command G and I'm going to group the plugins so I can turn them off and you can hear without without these plugins on there and then with the plugins. So you hear how it kind of fills it out and makes it a little bit fatter. We can also brighten it up a little bit too with this. Uh, shelf EQ on the EQ, so I can brighten it up a bit. Alright, and now we can go to our master fader and we can put a limiter on this and now that we've got kind of the levels mixed a little bit so everything kind of sounds pretty good with it, uh, it's not super duper loud, but it's loud enough and we can start to kind of pull all of this stuff together and finish this out. So we'll have ourselves a bootleg. So we'll pick like the loudest section of the whole thing. Alright, so you can see we're going above zero on this. So we want to kind of turn some things down so that way it's not all super loud and we're not just smashing it through the master fader. So now we can just adjust some of the volume levels. We've kind of already adjusted most of them, so it sounds pretty decent. Uh, but I would just maybe double check some of these levels. Alright, so after we've adjusted the levels a bit, we're trying to keep it from peaking or going above zero. But uh, what else we can do now is it's it's pretty close to zero. It still goes above a little bit, so we'll just take a limiter, and this is going to keep it from going above zero. So our ceiling here is what we're setting it to to make it. Uh, we're telling it not to go above minus 0.3. So it's we're telling it not to go to zero. All right, so that limiter is just going to kind of keep the levels in check so that it doesn't get to zero. And if we wanted to make the overall volume louder, we could push up some of the gain here and that's actually going to make it louder without it going into the red and clipping on our master fader. So where you see this volume where, where the level here is, when I play it, it won't go above uh, the zero mark and it won't go into the red anymore because we have this limiter on there. And we can continue to turn this up and it'll keep getting louder, but it won't go above zero. But remember, the more you turn this up, the more you're kind of squashing this sound and it's actually going to start to sound bad at some point. So we can use it to turn it up a little bit, but we don't want to use it to, we don't want to re rely solely on this limiter to try to make the whole thing louder. There's other things that, uh, that you can do for that, but for just this right now, for just trying to get to learn uh, how to create a bootleg, and for this stage in the process, I would say just learning how to use a limiter and putting that on there is a good place to start. All right, so what we covered was we found a song to use, uh, we imported the song, and we found the tempo, and we time stretched it. And then I showed you how you can use a different time te uh, different tempo than the original. Now, in this case, um, we basically just double timed the track here. We took uh, what was, uh, Ableton thought it was 125 beats per minute, uh, which half of that would be about 60 to 63 beats per minute. So we just kind of double timed that and turned it into a dance track. And then... Uh, we added some of our own drums using a kick and snap claps and then um, cymbals and hi-hats and all that kind of stuff. And then we chopped up and rearranged some of the different parts of the track by duplicating and reversing sections. And, uh, and then we added a synth sound. We didn't necessarily add a lead synth, but it was a synth sound. Uh, and then we mixed the levels and we got it all kind of arranged out into a bootleg. And then you can go through the process of exporting that, just like I showed you in the previous videos for creating edits and mashups. And so that is the process for creating a bootleg.